MATLAB on the Wiwolf cluster. And I, I have put the, the slides, this, the, the slides you're looking at in PDF format, uh, the link that is shown on the screen. <coughs> I advise you to, to download the slides so that you can have it with you as you are, as you are uh, doing the exercises, if you would like to, to do the, the exercises uh, that will make it easier for you to, uh, to follow the, the exercises. Uh, and, uh, and just to remind you, the meeting is being recorded. If you would not, don't, do not want the recording um, to show your, your camera by accident, uh, please turn off your camera. I have my colleague uh, on, the, on the call, uh, David O'Brien, who is going to be monitoring the chat. If you have any, any questions, um, you can uh, unmute yourself and, and ask the question, or you can ask the question in the chat. And my colleague, David, is monitoring the chat. If you have any, any other technical uh, observations uh, that you would like to do in the chat, um, uh, he's going to be monitoring. Uh, also, David is going to uh, put the, the link to the slides in the, in the chat as well as any other information uh, that might be useful uh, as we go along. Having said that, um, let's start with the, the outline for today's, today's talk. The, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna, going to uh, going briefly uh, tell you about why we're doing this class. In the past, we have, uh, we have had MATLAB classes, uh, but uh, we hadn't done one in several years uh, specifically for how to use MATLAB on BioWolf. Uh, so we'll tell you why. Uh, uh, and I, I, I wanted to make this class not about MATLAB by itself in isolation, but MATLAB as part of, of the BioWolf cluster. So uh, we're going to spend a lot of time uh, talking about the BioWolf cluster and how to run MATLAB specifically on BioWolf. And, and uh, I'm also gonna briefly talk about our new, the new license uh, for that MathWorks has uh, given uh, BioWolf uh, to allow us to give uh, BioWolf users access to uh, to unlimited uh, MATLAB licenses, and then we go to the uh, the technical the technical issues, uh, the technical description of how to run a MATLAB script interactively on BioWolf. Uh, we are going to use uh, a very simple script. It's a toy example of a script. It's not a realistic script, but it's going to allow us to to proceed through the exercises uh, quickly, since it, it won't take that long to, uh, to schedule uh, um, the job and to, and to get it running. We're also going to describe how to run a MATLAB script as a batch job. As you know, on, the, on, on, on a cluster, uh, and a cluster is specifically designed for users to run their jobs uh, unsupervised as in, in as a batch jobs. We're, I, I will explain how to run a single simple job with sbatch, the command sbatch, and how to run a job array that is uh, more than one job using Bowolf's swarm command. Something very, very important, and this is essential, it's, it's, it's very critical that you monitor your jobs, and I cannot stress this enough, Monitoring the jobs is very critical on any cluster, and and um, we're going to go over how to uh, how to monitor your own MATLAB jobs, and I also go over the limits of this uh, of of the running MATLAB on BioWolf, even though we have unlimited licenses, 
and there are some limits, pitfalls and caveats, and we all have to play by the rules of the Bible of Cluster because it's a shared resource. And uh, it, if we all uh, follow the rules of, of the cluster, uh, we, are, we are more likely to uh, do not have any issues with our, with our jobs. And, and finally, I'll give a conclusion, uh, which I'll go over a uh, short summary of what we've, what we've talked about. But let's, let's move on for the motivation. So, so the reason we gave this, we, we are giving this class today is because uh, there's, we have a new licensing model for MATLAB. Uh, the new licensing gives the users of BioWolf access to virtually unlimited licenses for MATLAB and access to all the toolboxes. In the past, we had a small number of uh, lines of two boxes. Now we, any user can use any of the license, any of the two boxes that MATLAB releases. And we have installed all the two boxes on BioWolf. And I say virtually unlimited licenses because uh, in theory, you could run any number of uh, MATLAB instances on BioWolf. However, in practice, as I mentioned, uh, BioWolf is a, the BioWolf cluster is a shared resource, and uh, and we have to we have to we have to respect uh, boundaries and limits as to what we can what we are able to achieve on the cluster on on the cluster. If we all follow uh, uh, proper uh, the appropriate um, benchmarking techniques, that will give you. A uh, hint of in a, later, then uh, then then everything should be fine, right? So, uh, and 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 finally, in in the past, it used to be that because of our limitation in licenses, users who needed to submit MATLAB jobs to the cluster had to had to submit uh, had to precompile their MATLAB code, and this added uh, a lot of complications to uh, to to the process of uh, running uh, jobs in the in, in in the in the cluster so this is not needed anymore and I will give you instructions on how to um, run your jobs in the cluster no more need to to compile them so let me go over uh, a quick review of, uh, of the cluster. And uh, uh, what, one of my colleagues uh, designed this very nice graphic, uh, a diagram of the parts of the cluster. We have a rel relatively homo he heterogeneous cluster. And uh, this seems very, very complicated, but actually uh, let's start with basic parts that we're going to use and then we're going to be adding, give an example today of how to run uh, a simple MATLAB script. So we have on the left hand side here in the in the red square we have a terminal. This represents your terminal in your computer with a connection uh, to BioWolf. And uh, this terminal it it can be established. The connection can be established. Uh, Depending on uh, depending on which platform you're using, uh, you you can use one method or another of establishing a, a connection and therefore a terminal connection to BioWolf node login node. Uh, if you are on Mac, uh, you can just simply use uh, the Mac terminal and uh, use SSH, and this is very simple for for text only applications. If you're gonna use, uh, if you need graphical uh, graphical applications, graphical MATLAB, for example, then you have to use uh, a specific application for that. So if you are on a PC, you can use PuTTY, you can use PowerShell if you have access to it, um, or any any other SSH application, any other secure share application uh, to establish a connection to PowerWolf. If you are on a Linux workstation, then it, the only thing you need to do is to uh, to SSH to BioWolf, and so in, uh, in the login node, BioWolf.nih.gov is the entry point to the cluster. So once we have established a connection to BioWolf, we have only 
we, we are only in the stage at which we are at the, in the entry point to the cluster. So we did not, we do not, we do not run any any computational jobs directly on the login node. For that, we need to make use of the uh, of uh, of the compute nodes of the cluster. But let me go over the storage first. So uh, any all users of the of BioWolf have access to uh, storage, and typically they will have a home directory, a data directory, and uh, and they have access to a to a scientific database directory. But within the within your account, you have a home directory and a data directory. Uh, the home the the data directory is where your source code is, where your applications, where your data sets are going to are going to be uh, stored. And when you need to run applications, either interactively or as batch jobs, you're going to run it on the compute nodes, not on the login node. Um, and something else that I like to mention is that if you need to do any data transfer or data management, you need to go through a different through a different server, and that's Helix, helix.nih.gov. And if you're going to transfer data, you need to be logged into Helix, not BioWolf. So this is uh, th these are some of the parts that we are going to need uh, for our example today. We had to run. MATLAB interactively in as batch jobs. Uh, so the MATLAB Institute wide license that has been given to, to BioWolf by MathWorks. So as I mentioned before, in the past, we used to have only 20, 26 MATLAB licenses. And this was just barely enough, uh, barely keeping up with the, with the demand uh, for MATLAB in the, in, on, on BioWolf and of course, with only 18 toolboxes uh, that were uh, our, our users uh, were asking for access to more, more of the toolboxes uh, released by, by MATLAB. And now we have virtually unlimited MATLAB licenses and toolboxes. And uh, I will, uh, so we don't have that issue anymore. And so how, how do you run, how, how do you run and what you need to run MATLAB script interactively. You can do it in either of two ways. You can run MATLAB interactively in the command line as text only, or you can use uh, no machine NX to run graphical MATLAB. So today, so right now I'm gonna give you a, a, just a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to, to run MATLAB on the command line. If you do, if you if you would like to try it on uh, on, on no machine, and, and if if you have no machine installed, you can go ahead and try it now. If you don't have it installed, uh, I have the link here on the screen. Uh, you will need to get no machine installed in your in your local computer, uh, and that will give you an inter a graphical interface for you to be able to run MATLAB graphically. But today we will run MATLAB on the, on the command line. And so, and so these are the steps if you, if, if you want to go ahead and, and try that. So you have to SSH uh, to BioWolf using your username. So replace username by your actual username. And then we're gonna establish a Nest Interactive session. This is going to give us access to a compute node within BioWolf. And this will take a few minutes to, to get established. And once you are in a compute node and uh, on, on the screen, uh, the compute node, the identifier for the compute node will be what, the, what is shown as CN1234. Once you're there, then you can do computations there and you can run MATLAB from there. Uh, we're going to switch to the, your data directory. You see that I put there CD slash data slash user that is going to switch you to the data directory and that is where we are going to copy the uh the demonstration from the directory shown on the screen from uh, slash data slash classes slash matlab uh, dash iwl then we're gonna enter the directory that we just copied we're gonna load the module matlab uh, 
and this only means that uh, any any executables that need to be on the path for running MATLAB we put in the path for you using that is that command module load and just briefly applications in on biowolf all applications i organized by modules and so anytime you, you want to run an application you have to previously load a module that corresponds to that application if you want to run more than one application then you run uh, all the modules needed for the application and then finally we are going to run uh, matlab in this way and uh, so that we can have a completely text based um, matlab and then we're just going to run our, our example and and this is this is a toy example it just calculates the happen hypotenuse of a triangle and it's going to give us a number so let me go ahead and run the demonstration here so in, in in my case and i hope you can see the characters on the screen i have already logged into biowolf myself so let me run a, as in this interactive session that could take uh that could take a few minutes while we're waiting for it yeah and so if 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 uh, there are any questions while we wait for the this interactive session, then we can go over that. Mm. Mm. So anyway, so so I, I I was talking about earlier about the difference between home and data directories. And uh, so let me just explain that the home directory it has a very limited um, space available for you to store. Um, so we want to have, uh, we ask our users to, to use their data directory, which, which should be slash data slash user username. Use your data directory to store uh, source code, to store uh, data sets. This data directory uh, has a higher limited has a higher capacity for files. And uh, and if you in the future need to to have more space available there, you can you can request it. Whereas the home directory has a, a limited capacity and it cannot be it cannot be increased. So use your home directory for for uh, configuration files and uh, things of that sort. Uh, so we see that the job has already been uh, allocated. In uh, in this case, uh, this error that we see here: no local display defined. Skipping. It's fine because we're not going to run MATLAB uh, graphically. We're only going to do it. We're only going to do it uh, text. So the screen, if you have already done this step, uh, should show your username. It should show the identifier for the compute node in which you are located. And now we are going to uh, we're going to switch to our data directory, which in this case is cd slash data slash user. Okay. And now we want to copy. We're going to copy the, let me, the, make this very, very small. Um, very bigger. We're going to copy the data from, now we are in the data directory. We're going to copy data from data classes, my lab IWL. So copy minus R, a recursive copy, data classes lab iwl space dot and that's going to copy the directory matlab dash iwl and all its contents to my current directory which is in this case data directory if we do all nls you see that the directory is there and so we're going to enter the directory cd matlab iwl and now we see that we have three files there 
So we have three files. And the first file, HIP, HYP.m, is just a, the MATLAB script. HYP.sh uh, and .swarm, those that we're going to use later. So let's just uh, um, forget about those two and just focus on HYP.m for now. So we're going to run MATLAB. But as I explained before, prior to using an application, you need to load the module corresponding to that application. And so in this case, the name of the module is MATLAB. So we're going to type module, lab, mat, module load MATLAB return. And the module is loaded. And so now we're gonna run MATLAB. And if we wanna run it completely, completely, completely text-based, uh, text we're gonna do no desktop, we do desktop. And we're gonna type also no splash. We don't want the splash screen either. No splash screen. And we're gonna type no JVM. We don't want Java. This simple example and no open GL either. And so this should only take a couple of minutes if you are testing it on the graphically on no machine. This takes a, uh, a little longer and uses more memory. So you would have to, probably you would have to request more memory up here where you do the uh, DS Interactive command, you have to request about four gigabytes. But in this case, this takes a couple of minutes. And once the, uh, once the screen, Once it's ready, we're just gonna type the uh, MATLAB command. Mm. Taking a little long, okay. So MATLAB command, let's do 22.5. The numbers don't really matter. And here we have our answer. So, and this is, this is what, what this gives you is an interactive uh, command line MATLAB application. And this is, this is very useful to run in files. If you want to do it graphically, then uh, you can try it from, uh, from no machine. And so the only difference will be that you would have to type MATLAB space ampersand and no options so that you can have all the graphic options for you. And, and you should be able to see the screen if you are testing that. Okay, so, but for, for most of our users, we, um, the, uh, the goal is to have your jobs run as batch because in a cluster, you have, the, the beauty of a cluster is that you can have uh, applications code that can run in parallel simultaneously for long periods of time. And for that, we need to, to use the, the batch job submission. Uh, so interactively it will be, as we will see later, just a, a way to test your jobs. For some users, all they would do is, is to run MATLAB interactively. But for many, uh, their, their final goal is to run jobs, in several jobs in parallel simultaneously. And for that, they would need batch jobs. So Let's see how to run a single job with this batch. And so let's, uh, let's see. Uh, so here we have our, like in, in the screen I was showing earlier, we have our, our MATLAB script and then we have uh, the uh, .sh script, which is a, uh, a batch script uh, that we're gonna use to submit jobs. So, and this is the script. So. In the first line, you see there's a, it says a slash bin slash bash. That's just telling the, uh, the interpreter that, that the, 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 the current file is a, is a bash command file. And here we have what is called the directives. The directives, the S batch directives are going to tell S batch what the parameters of the job are such as the, the name of the job, if you want to give it a name, 
uh, the number of CPUs that you would like to allocate for your jobs, the memory that you want to allocate for the jobs, your dead time, and, and others uh, that I'm not gonna go over here, uh, but you, you can have a number of parameters that you want to pass to the sbatch command. And then you load the module and then you execute it uh, in this way. So uh, we have on this, on this hyp.sh file, we're gonna have, we're gonna execute, execute MATLAB like, a, like we did it with the S interactive. We're gonna use the no display flag, no desktop, no JVM, no splash flags. But uh, because this is not gonna give us an interactive screen, we also need to give the, uh, the, the, the script, we, we need to give it the command that we're going to run in the parameters. So in this case, uh, we have HYP three comma four. It's the, the command that we want to run within, within the, the batch command and then exit so that it exits MATLAB. What is happening here is that uh, when we run this job in the cluster, sbatch is going to run one instance of MATLAB. It's going to then run, uh, execute the function HYP using the parameters three, comma four, three and four, and then it's going to exit. And it's going to store the output of that function in a, in a file. So this is how we submit. We submit using uh, the command sbatch followed by the name of the batch script. And we take a note of our job ID, which is an identifier for the job that is going to be uh, running. And uh, if we wait a little while, then we'll be able to see uh, this new file here, which is an output file. In this case, uh, the name is learn dash and the name of the job ID dot out. And this is just the output of the function. And we can use a simple cat command to look at the output. And what we see, what we will see is uh, just whatever was the output of uh, executing an instance of MATLAB and then running the function within MATLAB. So and let me do it. Here, I'm going to exit MATLAB. And then we see that we have hyp.sh. And we do, we can do a cat if we want to inspect what's in it. And as I said before, there's uh, the parameters uh, encoded in the directives, the sbatch directives. And then we load the module and then we execute the, uh, the function. We, we call one instance of MATLAB and then we execute the function within it and then we exit the MATLAB instance. And so we use the command sbatch and then the name of the, the name of the, uh, of the batch script. And what we have here is uh, the job ID of the, the job that is running. And so, uh, see, it takes a little while. Uh, as you know, when you submit a, a, a job to the, uh, to the cluster, uh, it goes to a queue of uh, jobs that are waiting to be scheduled to run. And so once the job runs, we should be seeing an output of, um, the output file that is going to show us what the um, is going to show us uh, what the output was, and let's see. We do ls at some point it'll it'll show up, but anyway. Uh, so a, a, a little bit later, I will I will give you the uh, we can use for example a command that is job hist in the uh, the the job id to see where the type it 432 
35570. And we see that it's now running. Uh, and we see that it's running and it's, it's allocated to CPUs as we told it in the directives. It says a wall time of 30 minutes, but it's not going to be 30 minutes in, and we have allocated two gigabytes for it to run. And so finally, um, if we do job hist again, we see that it's completed. And then we see there's a new file here is the output file is uh, slurm uh, stash and the, the job ID. So we can do a simple cat to see what's in the output and we see that uh, the output is uh, anything that um, that will be outputted to, uh, to the screen when you run MATLAB is going to show up in this output um, file, uh, output, output file. And so here we have run only one job with, uh, with MATLAB. So, but how do we run more than one, how do we run several jobs? And so the process is similar um, and we're gonna use what is called a job array. And today we're going to use the, the command uh, swarm uh, developed by one of my colleagues in, on, on, in the BioWolf team. And we're gonna use a different, but, but uh, a, 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 a different script. It's a swarm script. In this case, I named it hyp.swarm. And this script uh, is shown here. So, and again, we have uh, directives within this script. In this case, uh, these are the directives of the swarm command. And T is the number of threads that we're going to reserve, the number of CPUs. And Minus G and G is the uh, the number of gigabytes that we're requesting. In this case, I requested two gigabytes. Dash dash time is the time that I think my my job is going to need to run, which I did. I overestimated it here with twenty minutes, and then dash M MATLAB. Mat that is the name of the module that we're going to use. And so, in this case, I am only running three jobs. And as you can see, there's the three jobs are arranged in three lines. So each line is going to spin one job and all the lines are similar. The only difference between them is the parameters. And this is what's called uh, perfect par parallelism. So, which means that uh, this, 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 this uh, what we what I want to achieve here is can be fully par be paralyzed fully. The only thing that's going to change is the parameters, but otherwise everything is going to stay the same. So this is a perfect example for uh, running jobs uh, job arrays with swarm. And so we're going to use our swarm command to run the the swarm script uh, as before. We're going to be given a job ID. And we're going to give it be given uh, a series of output files. So because we have three lines in the swarm script, we're going to have three output files uh, times two. So we will have zero, one, and two. Uh, the zero corresponds to the job one, one to the number job two, and two will correspond to the third line of the of our uh, a swarm script. And we have uh, different extensions here. Uh, we can see that we have the extension E and the extension O. This only means uh, the extension O is the output of, uh, of the standard output. And that, that E would have the, the output of the standard error. As, as you know, in Linux, there's standard output and standard error. And so we want, we, we the, the swarm command captures those two. And so the exit, the, the output of the command uh, of, the, of the output file show you, that O file shows you uh, the, the output of, the, of running each one. So let me 
try here on the side. So uh, you can see we have the hyp.swarm. And so we can take a look to see that it looks good. And we see the, the swarm directives, they look fine. And we have three lines. And when I, when I submit this to the cluster, uh, it's, the swarm command is going to generate a job array of three, uh, of size three. And that means three jobs. So let me do swarm hip dot swarm. And As before, this gives me a job ID that I can use to uh, to look into uh, where my job is in the in the process of being submitted. Uh, if my job is running or after it finishes running, well, how my job ran, and that will we will uh, I'll go into detail how to how to monitor your jobs. So let me see. Let's see, we can do another job hist and the number 432-36137. And it's pending, which means uh, it's still waiting in the queue to be, uh, to be run. So, and as before, we use job hist. We have a number of tools on BioWolf that we can use to take a look at our at our, at our jobs. Uh, it's very important to to look at the job to try to dissect what what's going on with your job. Uh, and so, you should always uh, make a note of the job ID so that you can you can fully appreciate what's going to happen. With your job, what's happening with your job, and you can get a sense of uh, how long it takes to run, how long it takes, how long it waits in the in the queue, uh, if it's using the resources that I thought it would use or not. Uh, but I will give you a list of tools, a most the most common tools in in a little bit. So let's do repeat it again. So it's still pending. So oh, now it's showing that it completed. So the three of them are completed. The three sub jobs have completed, and we can see that. Um, in this case, they ran in different compute nodes and they ran basically simultaneously, uh, so to speak. Not exactly, but roughly simultaneously, which is great. And so now we see we see our directory, our data directory has many more output files. And let's see what we can see here in one of them. Let's look at the job number zero the output and it's just showing what you would see if you were to execute MATLAB interactively in the result that we want. So, uh, and it shows you the command that, uh, that was ran as well. So, uh, all right, so let me now make this screen bigger. Anyway, so, so, so far we have, uh, so we have looked at using a toy example a toy script, MATLAB script, we have looked at how to run MATLAB interactively, how to run a single job, and how to run a job array or several jobs uh, in parallel. Uh, of course, it gets more complicated than this, but uh, we I'm, I'm not going to go into all the complications. I would like to just give you uh, a full picture of uh, what happens when you run it and the importance of monitoring and benchmarking your MATLAB jobs. And so where does all this step, interactive versus single job versus job array fit within the, uh, within the process of running jobs in the cluster? So, and more importantly, how do you know what resources you need for your MATLAB jobs? That is how much memory I'm going to request, how many CPUs I'm going to request, and uh, what time, how, how do I know how long my, my, uh, my, my scripts are gonna run for? So, and this is, uh, this is a procedure that um, is basically ba is based on trial and error. So there's not a, a specific way, there's not a, a, a deterministic way of, uh, 
knowing how many what resources your jobs are going to use you have to test 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 so to start you have to test using s interactive if if it's possible sometimes this is not possible because the jobs are too long in duration or or a number of others limitations but if you can test your matlab script before submitting matlab script a matlab script as a job test it using s interactive test it interact interactively do not send do not submit a matlab job a matlab script to the cluster as as, as a badge if you don't know if the uh, if the job runs to start with so test it interactively go into an S open an, start an S interactive session you know in biowolf and then run your matlab script run matlab from there and then uh, run as interactive and run your scripts and test them debug your scripts fully until you are confident that they that they run without errors and it's also uh, it, testing interactively is also it's also important because you can start getting a sense of how much memory and cpus your script take and and and, and i will tell you how to how to take a look at what how much memory and cpu your your uh, your code is using but if you cannot test as s interactive then test using a single job using s batch or if you do test using s interactive then the next step will be to test it as a single job using the command s batch and then you check how much memory cpu and runtime it uses either as s interactive or as a, a single job Right, so you can start getting a sense of the resources utilized by your by your code, and then if they use it, if 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 you check the memory and CPU runtime, and one of them is not enough, then adjust it. If it's more than enough, then reduce it, and then uh, go back to testing again, either or, uh, and or in, in, interactively or as a single job, and so. So you repeat this cycle until you know, uh, until you're confident that you can predict, roughly predict how much memory, CPU and runtime your job needs. So after you are confident about this, then um, if this is a parallel for, for many cases, the only, the, you only need a single job and it's going to be all you need, a you know, single MATLAB job on S batch, and then you're done. But if you have a job that can be parallelized and you want to run it with, with Swarm, then uh, you need to test as well before you run uh, a large number of jobs. As I, in, in this example I showed before, I, we have a three line, Swarm script, which means three jobs. This is the way you should start. You should start three to five and no more lines in your Swarm script so that if there's a problem, uh, if there's an error or something goes wrong with your jobs, you don't waste all those resources by running uh, a thousand jobs and, and erroring out in a thousand jobs. All those resources will go to waste. And so you test small using form three to five jobs. And then again, check memory CPU runtime of all the sub jobs. And assuming that everything ran, that everything completed successfully. And uh, sometimes the memory for single jobs and job arrays, the memory and CPU and runtime can vary uh, if you have different data sets or because of the properties properties of the data sets, the, uh, different data sets will give you different run times and different memory uh, for different sub jobs so you have to you have to check you have to check and then you have to adjust and then go through a cycle increase number of jobs in swarm let's let's see uh let's say uh they already they i am confident that they run that they are running and uh and that i'm using the resources efficiently then i increase the number of jobs in the swarm to 10 or 20 and then and then i test again and then we'll go to the cycle of uh 
of testing until I'm, I'm very, very confident that, that I can submit a 1,000 job swarm, a 1,000 line swarm, and that uh, more than likely everything is going to go well. So uh, just to summarize how to determine resources of MATLAB jobs is a trial and error process. But you start small and you test small to make sure that when things go wrong, they go wrong in, on a small scale and not on a large scale. Because if we, things go wrong on a large scale, then we have a lot of resources that are, being, that are going to waste. We need to test small and then increase gradually. So, um, so this is the outline again. And so something that is very, very important is to be able to monitor your jobs. So monitoring jobs, how to monitor MATLAB jobs and why, why do we need to do this? So monitoring tells you if, uh, sorry, if the resources you allocated are being used. So it's, it's the only way to know if uh, the memory, CPU and time that you allocated is being uh, is being used, or if, if not, if it's not enough, or is if it's more than enough. Monitoring during testing also gives you a sense of what resources and how much of each one of the, those resources you need for future jobs. And you also need to monitor because you need to know if a job is still in the queue, waiting to be waiting to run, or uh, if a job has already completed. And if it did complete, did it complete successfully? If it failed, and why it failed? Uh, I do want to emphasize that users are responsible for monitoring their own jobs and uh, making sure that um, <clears throat> that uh, that they can scale properly. That you have tested small and then increase gradually to to large large scale. If if this is what you need, so you can monitor in in two different ways or both ways. You can monitor using our command line tools and you can see the, uh, I'm, I'm giving you a, a link in, on the screen on that user guide. We have a number of, uh, you have a description of the most commonly used com uh, command line tools, the most useful. Uh, if you are, uh, if you prefer the command line, uh, many people prefer the graphical dashboard and or, or, you, or you can do both. In, 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 uh, in my case, I, I do both. Uh, you draw benefits from both of them. And this is uh, in hpc.nih.gov slash dashboard. You have a web-based dashboard that you can use to look at your uh, past jobs and currently running jobs and to look at the memory, CPU and profile and other uh, characteristics. If you are going to monitor your MATLAB jobs uh, on the screen, we have a number of, uh, we, we, we have many, many commands, many uh, command line uh, tools, but we have, for example, S jobs uh, that is very good to, to give you a snapshot of your running, of your running jobs. And so in this case, uh, it, it gives you the name of the job, it gives you the job ID, uh, it gives you the runtime, the, the wall time that you requested. We also have job load, which tells you the load and memory that was used uh, in your that is being used in your in your running job. And finally, we have uh, this is also very very commonly used uh, job hist commands. is used mostly for jobs uh, that have already finished. Uh, completed, although you can use them while also while they're running, uh, just to inspect whether they are pending in queue or if they are running or if they have completed. And uh, job hist shows you which path you submitted it from. It shows you which command you used to submit it, and it shows you all the resources that you requested and uh, and the and the compute node in which it is running or it ran. Um, you can also use uh, a command called dashboard on the line CLE is the uh, command line version of the graphical dashboard, the web-based dashboards. And 
And if you go to the link at the bottom of the screen, you can, you can see a description, a dashboard uh, command line, and it has a number of flags that you can use. So that you can um, take a look, uh, customize the look that you want to take at your uh, at, at jobs that have either completed or are running. And in this case, uh, I used the, the, uh, uh, the, the flags on the screen because this is what I wanted to see of my job. Of, of my job. I wanted to see uh, the job ID. I wanted to see the partition in which is running, the nodes, the memory, uh, the CPU and memory utilization in percentage. And so, but you can customize your, your dashboard command line command in any way you like in, 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 uh, in a number of ways uh, that in whichever way is more useful to you. And now we have uh, what, what, what I'm showing you on the screen is the, uh, the, the web-based dashboard graphical dashboard so and uh, the link is given on the on the bottom of the screen you can you can go and try it uh, right now if you like if you would like to do that uh, please go ahead and it will give you um, it, 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 it'll give you the status of your account it will give you the space that you have uh, that you have in each one of your directories that you have access to and this is under the uh, under the uh, accounts tab uh, in disk usage tabs. But if you go to the job info tab and you see it up there on top, job info tab, you should see uh, a listing of all your uh, recently jo recent jobs. And you can see jobs that are also running in here. And these are the job IDs. Uh, this is the name of the job. If you gave it a name, uh, are they completed? Have they, have they failed or are they still running? And which node are they running on? And you can configure these columns in, uh, in many different ways. You can add or, or, or take out any uh, columns uh, depending on your, on your needs. And so for example, if we click on one of these job IDs, this is actually a button and it gives you a, a graphical profile of the memory, CPUs and uh, and other things, uh, GPUs, if you're using GPUs, you have memory, CPUs. So um, here we can, we can see graphically uh, the memory that we allocated, which in this case, we can see up here, uh, we allocated four gigabytes. We didn't, we used about a gigabyte and then we allocated two CPUs down here. And that's the, the black line. The line shows uh, two, two CPUs allocated and we see that uh, we did not exceed significantly the number of CPUs allocated, and we also did not exceed the memory. But anyway, um, monitor monitor the jobs, and we have um, we have uh, in. On, on, on the BioWolf page, we have an introduction to BioWolf and we have videos on how to determine um, how much memory your job um, is going to use. So limits, uh, pitfalls and caveats. So as mentioned before, I cannot stress enough the, uh, the importance of testing and benchmarking. Test before running large jobs. Make sure that you know what resources your job needs and how long before you submit a large job. You need to be confident that you'll be able to predict roughly how much memory, CPU, GPU if needed, and disk space your job needs and for how long. Uh, something that I didn't go over here, but uh, you can find information on the website is use L scratch for temporary files or files that need lots of input output. So if you have a MATLAB script that, um, that uh, writes temporary files or writes an up output files uh, and does a large number of 
reading and writing, you need to try to store this uh, output files in local scratch. This is uh, air scratch is a local local disks that are disks that are local to the compute node. And please, uh, if you need this, uh, either check on our um, on 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 our, on our website hpc.nhl.gov or uh, email us. I'll give our email at the end, um, and it will we will help you uh, we'll help you set it up so that you can use uh, local scratch. So something else that I like to point out is that starting MATLAB is computationally expensive. So the goal should be to try to limit the times that you start MATLAB within a job. As I showed in the script that we ran, every time you run a MATLAB command, this is going to start a MATLAB, a MATLAB instance. And to start a MATLAB instance, uh, there is a need to uh, to access uh, many different libraries. So this is computationally expensive. So we want to what we want to try to do in our in our batch batch scripts and swarm scripts is to open Mat to start MATLAB only once, execute whatever we need to execute within MATLAB, and then close MATLAB, as opposed to starting MATLAB a lot many many times within a single job. Uh, make sure you have enough space in your data directory for your jobs. So uh, again, the, you need to be confident that you can predict how much space is going to be needed for each job. And then you can calculate uh, what data space you're going to need. And, you, and if you do not have enough data, enough uh, space in your data directory, uh, please get in touch with us uh, to request a, uh, an increase. And uh, most important, try to run jobs with wall time more than 15 minutes. And I know our toy example only took uh, a few minutes to run, but in practice, it is much better, it is more efficient uh, to run, to try to group job, to try to group jobs that are short into uh, several jobs uh, and try to make it so that the duration is 15 minutes approximately or longer. And also very important, please read your NH email, make sure that you check your email in case when you're running jobs, in case the BioWolf staff needs to contact you regarding your running jobs. So, and finally, hopefully now you are aware of the benefits of the MATLAB license of BioWolf and Hopefully you know how to run MATLAB both in your capture session and as a batch job and how to, uh, to go from one to the other and uh, how to test your jobs and, uh, and know how to avoid uh, common pitfalls while running MATLAB jobs. And so uh, this uh, talk would not be possible without the support of all the staff members of uh, the BioWolf team, the high performance computing services team in, uh, in CIT. And if you have any questions uh, about either um, about the resources or you have any problems, if you need help debugging uh, a script uh, for job submission, uh, please uh, drop us an email and uh, we will try to help you out. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, uh, to unmute and ask your question or ask it in the chat. Thank you.